page 51 to page 52, we'll continue with error analysis. Okay, so I guess that's okay. We'll start from page 51. That would be line two from the bottom. I'll try, okay, to go to the center of the classroom, but it's okay if the microphone doesn't work very well. So I will probably have to stay right, okay, at what I am now, all right? It works better. The procedural error analysis, okay, we start from line two from the bottom. The procedure for error analysis is spelled out in quarter in 1974 is as follows. First, a corpus of language is selected. Okay, I believe we talked about that, but we are just repeating this to refresh your memory. This involves deciding, okay, we are now turning to page 52, on the size of the sample, the medium to be sample, and, okay, the homogeneity of the sample. With regard to learners' ages, okay, first language background, stage of development, etc. So these, okay, need to be controlled. These are the control variable. All right, including, okay, the samples, we're talking about the participant or the subject's age and their first language background and also the stage of development. You can put, okay, the low achieving or the low achieving, okay, level of learners with, okay, the higher level of learners because in that case, okay, you don't get to make any conclusion. Your research finding, okay, will be, okay, changed, will be tended because, okay, the level of development of these learners are different. Okay, and second, the errors in the corpus are identified. All right, so you need to be able to identify, okay, what kind of errors these are. Coder points out the need to distinguish, okay, lapses, okay, which would refer to deviant sentences that are the result of processing limitations rather than lack of competence. All right, so that would be de deviant, okay, sentences. In other words, non-target sentences. Sentences, okay, that are not conformed to the target language forms. So there is a necessity, okay, to tell these, okay, apart, to know which one is which. That, okay, there are what we so-called deviant sentences that are the result of processing limitation. So it has less to do with, okay, the learner's competence. It has more to do with the conceptual limitations for learners, okay, to process such information. And, okay, uh, well, one of okay, it is collapses and the other is called errors. Okay, these are deviant sentences, also non-target sentences or non-target forms that are the result of lack of competence. In other words, okay, if, okay, say for example, the competence remain the same, but because of the contextual elimination that would possibly uh, inhibit the processing of such information. And okay, either the contextual okay, situation will facilitate the processing is that right? So we need to be able to see very clearly to make a very clear distinction between even though, okay, you see the results, okay, of uh, the language production as an error. But, okay, as far as error goes, okay, there could be the errors that can show the lack of competence of the learners, but sometimes it has nothing to do with, it has very least to do with the competence. It has more to do with the limitations, okay, for such information to be processed, all right? This is what Coder said, okay, again, all right, we are talking about, okay, Coder study in 1974 about the procedure, and also, okay, the same researcher in 1971 first, okay, wish to make such a distinction between lapses and errors, and this, okay, would be a very important foundation later for us to understand, okay, uh, whatever, okay, has been concluded, and even the entire procedure of error analysis. He also points out that sentences can be okay, overtly idiosyncratic and also okay, coverly idiosyncratic. If it's overtly idiosyncratic, meaning that you can see the differences. There are obvious differences. There are very clear evidence to that. However, okay, if okay, idiosyncratic errors that are coverly, somehow okay, they are not open to direct inspection. Okay, they are hidden. They are not so evidently seen. Is that right? Okay, going back to the definition, overtly idiosyncratic errors, okay, are errors that are uniform in terms of target language rules. And coverly idiosyncratic errors, okay, these are the non-target sentences, non-target forms of sentences or deviant sentences that are superficially, okay, well-formed, but when their context of use examined are clearly ungrammatical. 
So you may see that, okay, these are the clear. Uh, clearly, I mean, on the surface, you may see that, okay, these sentences produced by learners can conform to the target forms. However, okay, by closer examination, by considering the entire context, you actually find that, okay, it could be wrong. All right? This happens a lot in, okay, a context, okay, where tenses, okay, need to be used differently. For example, when you're trying to describe, okay, a story, and you're talking about something that happened in the past, all right, you use past tense. However, okay, with the previous sentence, okay, using a past tense, the next sentence, okay, shift, okay, to say, for example, the present sentence, present regular tense. Then, okay, if you look at each, okay, sentences, they may be correct. However, if you look at the entire context, you may have a different ways of seeing that in what way the ten tenses have been used wrong. Is that right? Okay, it depends on the context. But if you look at, okay, the sentence, if you look at the forms being produced, okay, individually, you may find that, okay, each, okay, stands correct. However, putting it together as a context, okay, you may be able to see that, okay, the understanding of, okay, such tense, I mean, the verb tense use of this particular one could be wrong. Okay, continue. And, okay, um, the errors are classified, okay, that's, okay, the next procedure, procedure number three. This involves assigning a grammatical description to each error. In other words, okay, when you identify the error, first you have to see the error. And you have to tell us, okay, what kind of errors these are, whether or not these errors, okay, should be considered as a lapse, or, okay, errors uh, owing to the lack of competence, or, okay, these could be overtly idiosyncratic errors, or, okay, coverly idiosyncratic errors. All right, so that's what identification means. And okay, procedure number three, the next step is to classify those errors okay, into the assigning okay, category of grammar. All right? And okay, procedure number four, the errors are then explained. In this stage of the procedure, an attempt is made to identify the psycholinguistic cause of the errors. That's what we do okay, in procedure number four, in stage four. That's okay, once the errors are identified, once the errors are assigned okay, to their different or to their respective grammatical category, then the next thing to do is to offer why such errors happen, why such errors occur. And okay, in this stage, okay, the account for such explanation of these errors okay, would be falling into the psycho psycholinguistic explanation framework. All right, continue. For example, an attempt could be made to establish which of the five processes described by Salinger, okay, we discussed that, is responsible for each error. And then, okay, the errors are evaluated. This stage involves assessing the serious evaluation, okay, um, well, basically the seriousness of each error in order to take principal teaching decision. So stage five is a very pedagogical. It's actually for the teaching purpose, all right? Once the errors are explained, again, okay, by psycholinguistic framework, and okay, the next thing to do is okay, to evaluate these errors, to see that how these errors can be further fixed in the future by okay, any teaching means. Is that right? All right, so it has very strong okay, pedagogical emphasis in okay, the last stage, in stage five. Error evaluation is necessary only if the purpose of error analysis is pedagogical or pedagogical. It's redundant if our analysis is carried out in order to research, okay, second language acquisition. If the purpose is not about teaching and learning, if the purpose is only about, okay, research, then you can skip, okay, stage five. Are we all good so far? This is to tell you the entire, okay, procedural process for a typical error analysis suggested, recommended by quarter. Are we all good? All right, we'll come back, all right, if you have any further questions. The context for the new interest in errors was the recognition that they provide information about the process of acquisition. As okay, uh, Rob Ellis pointed out earlier, this term has two meanings, all right, when we use this term, process of acquisition. Two questions can be asked therefore. What light can the study of learner error throw on the sequence of development? We want to know the sequence, how one moves okay, to another. The interlanguage continuum, again, before you arrive at the ultimate goal of a second language position. What happened before, what happened previously should be considered as okay, what happened in the interlanguage development. Is that right? So that's the interlanguage continuum, okay, the term that we use. Through which okay, learners pass. Okay, so in other words, okay, how many different, okay, what are those okay, many stops? And in what way the learners move okay, through 
the stops in the entire interlanguage continuum. Okay, that's the question S. That's the first question S. All right, continue. And what light can ever shed on the strategies that learners use to assimilate the rules of second language? Both of these questions are all central importance to the main thing of okay, the natural order of development. So again, okay, we okay, reinforce okay, what we already discussed previously, that okay, there are two questions, two major emphasis in understanding the natural development or the route or the order of second language position. First, we talk about the process. How okay, we move from one stop to another in the interlanguage continuum. And the second is that while we are moving along, where we are moving through the entire continuum, what kind of strategies do we use in order okay, to help us to move along? All right? Okay. Error analysis okay, provides two kinds of information about interlanguage. So why error analysis if okay, we simply attempt to understand the entire process and also to understand the procedures, in what way the error analysis helps? in the understanding of the process, in the understanding of the strategies. Okay, this is to tell you that, okay, in what way the error analysis can make, okay, a substantial contribution in understanding the process as well as the strategies. Okay, the first, which is relevant to the first of the two questions posed before, uh, above, concerns the linguistic type of errors produced by second language learners. Richards, for instance, provides a list of the different types of errors in, involving, okay, verbs. All right, however, the type of information is not very helpful when it comes to understanding the learner's developmental sequence. Error analysis must necessarily present a very incomplete okay, picture of second language acquisition because it focuses only on part of the language second language learner produced, that part containing idiosyncratic forms. Describing the language requires identifying what the learner can do in total, okay, means completely, by examining both idiosyncratic and non idiosyncratic form. Also because second language acquisition is a continuous process development, it's doubtful whether much insight can be gained about the route of the route learners take from the procedure that examine language, learner language at a single point in time. What do you mean by at a single point in time? Why it's okay in this way that okay error analysis may be able to make certain contribution as claimed by other researchers, but Alice here, okay, obviously did not agree. Well, he has a different view of seeing error analysis, okay, only offering partial information about the process of development. What's the problem here? I mean, what's okay, what did this passage, what did this paragraph is about? What did this paragraph present the views of Rod Alice, at least okay, in this very short paragraph, that okay, error analysis, okay, may be making okay contribution in one part, but not okay to present an entire or a whole picture of uh, learners into language process. What is the problem here? Well, basically, I mean, the emphasis is on, okay, these two phrases first in total, okay, that's completely, so it does not offer complete information about what happened. And, okay, to go with this, okay, error analysis only offer partial information in a particular given period of time. So what well, you may make errors, okay, whether okay, these are permanent errors that okay, reflect okay, your competence, or these are only occasional lapses. But okay, whether occasional lapses or just okay, you know, somehow look okay, at consistent, relatively consistent errors, but these okay, would be something happened to learners okay, interlanguage competence at a certain period of time or in a certain period of time. Unless okay, these are fossilized, that's another different issue. If they are fossilized, okay, well basically all these features, okay, basically non-target or deviant features, they kind of, okay, uh, they kind of uh, send in, so there's no way that okay, these can be okay, rooted out and to be fixed. All right, so again, okay, not a complete picture, offering only partial information, even though error analysis, okay, made, okay, quite a lot of contribution in understanding the process and also how errors to be treated, okay, as a learner strategy, all of these we have discussed previously. All right, on page 53, error analysis provides a synchronic description of learner's errors. By being synchronic, meaning that okay, it is uh, isolated at the time being. 
it should not okay be considered okay as a, well if you consider that okay as a development however it's not the historical okay review of everything that happened in other words okay well this is a study this is description okay to offer the idea that something okay the language features that learners use only occur at a given period of time is that right all right but okay this can be misleading the synchronic description this is what happened okay at the time this is what happened okay when learner when learner develop their interlanguage at again a certain period of time but it's not a historical review of what happened in the entire interlanguage continuum however okay if you put all the errors together and to hope that you may be able to present a bigger picture or almost okay a whole picture a thorough picture of uh, all the mistakes that learners made starting from okay the first stop okay to the destination i mean to the last stop before okay you arrive at the destination would that be helpful to understand through errors about okay the entire historical development of the learners interlanguage continuum would that be helpful this is another question if we argue if the argument okay lies in that okay how error analysis we only offer explanation or description about learners' interlanguage competence at a certain period of time, at certain isolated period of time. Then if, okay, if this is possible, that starting from okay, the very beginning that error made the first mistake, learners made the first mistake, all the way through the entire interlanguage continuum. If you collect okay, all errors made at every single stop, would this be able to provide a more historic description instead of okay, only the chronic description? And that would be able to give okay, a clear idea about how learners push through the in entire interlanguage continuum. Would that be helpful? I mean, if you follow this argument through. Much more helpful. Okay, but okay, if, okay, the very, if the very idea, if the intrinsic nature of analyzing learners' errors cannot represent okay the learner's competence development then that will again okay defeat the purpose of error analysis whether or not okay it offers synchronic description which obviously is very limited and could be misleading or an overall historic okay review of learners interlanguage development you understand the question let's finish reading this paragraph and okay we'll revisit a sentence may appear to be non-idiosyncratic, even in context, but may have been derived by means of an interim rule in the interlanguage. By interim rule meaning that it's a, it's a tentative rule, right? It's only used, okay, as, okay, well, you know, uh, somehow, okay, as a buffer, okay, only for a period of time. An example might be a sentence, okay, like, okay, what's he doing? which is well formed, but may have been learned as a ready-made chunk instead of okay, an analyzed one. All right, because okay, you have acquired this particular expression or this particular sentence, what's he doing as a chunk, as a whole, instead of okay, engaging in the analysis of different grammatical syntactical component of each single word used in this particular sentence. Then in that case, you may be able to perform very well in this particular sentence, and again, it's the target form. However, it doesn't necessarily represent that, okay, you have already been equipped with the confidence or understanding that how the sentence is formed, okay? Later, the learner might start producing sentences of the kind, okay, what he is doing, which is, okay, somehow, all right, as what we already discussed, is overtly idiosyncratic but may represent a step along the interlanguage continuum. So even though by making the mistakes, okay, what learners is actually stepping up. Learners actually is making progress, even though the form itself, the sentence the learner produced, is actually a deviant sentence. You understand? However, he's making progress. For this reason, an analysis of linguistic type of errors produced by learners does not tell us much about the sequence of development. So even though you can assign, okay, what type of errors that learners produce, then somehow, okay, it gives us very little information about how learners, okay, move on through the entire interlanguage development. Are we all good so far? Okay, um, actually I'm repeating this. 
If you look at page 52, you will see that, okay, the first paragraph, the first larger paragraph explains the entire procedures of uh, error analysis to tell you that this is what error analysis will do, right? And in the next paragraph, okay, this is for, okay, transitional. It actually reminds, okay, all of us of the necessity of studying second language acquisition. It's about understanding the process, it's about understanding the strategies, all right? As a transition, Ron Ellis continued moving on the criticism and the doubts cast on error analysis, saying that if you, okay, believe that if any researcher, if second language acquisition researcher believe that the understanding of the process and the strategies that second language learners use in, okay, the entire interlanguage development, in other words, second language development, is necessary, then somehow error analysis, okay, is very limited in presenting the whole picture of the process because it only gives okay, partial information, it gives synchronic description of what happened for learners, okay, and again, okay, by okay, errors that learners make at a very limited period of time. It failed to offer the entire okay, developmental picture of okay, learners' interlanguage development. So as far as the process of understanding second language acquisition goes, our analysis cannot offer holistic picture or it cannot offer thorough okay developmental picture of one owner. Alright, so that's the doubt that's okay in this paragraph that Ralph Alice cast on okay error analysis. Is that right? So this is the entire structure okay moving along on page 52. And it continue okay giving you that why and in what way that the synchronic description okay cannot really help to understand the learners okay into language development. By giving an example of okay, what he's doing, learn as a ready-made chunk, and okay, without okay, being analyzed into different synthetical category or synthetical feature. In other words, even though a learner, a second language learner of this particular sentence, okay, what's he doing? Without understanding okay, the individual or all the synthetical features okay, to compose this particular statement, a learner can still produce okay, a target form of such a sentence. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that they already acquire the necessary syntactical feature of that sentence. And later, okay, as the learner moves along, and he will be able to produce an okay, obviously erroneous sentence like okay, what he is doing. But this okay, would possibly suggest that learner has engaged in the analytical competence of okay, one chunk okay, to be okay, divided into different syntactical features. So actually, learner is making progress. Is that right? So this is an example of the offer here to say that okay, why synchronic discussion doesn't work or could be misleading. Are we all good so far? Shall we continue? All right. Are we sure? Are we all sure that we understand? Okay. So on page fifty-three. Okay. Um, the second type of information, which is uh, relevant to the question about the strategy. So we challenge how error analysis okay, cannot present a good picture or okay, a clear picture or a thorough picture of uh, the process of second language acquisition. And now we continue okay, challenging error analysis in regard to the strategies that okay, we wish to understand the second language learners use. All right, so uh, that is relevant to the question about the strategy used in interlanguage concerns the psycholinguistic type of errors produced by second language learners. Here, error analysis is on stronger ground. Although there are considerable problems about coding errors in terms of categories such as developmental or interference, a study of errors reveals conclusively that there is no single or prime cause of errors. As claimed by contrary analysis hypothesis that there's only one prime cause of errors that would be differences between languages, right? However, error analysis over here is more open-minded as to, okay, why okay, errors actually occur and why they are actually errors. Is that right? Are we all good so far? Okay, so we'll continue. Richards, okay, 1974, identifies various strategies associated with, okay, developmental or, as he calls them, intralingual errors. 
these are not okay the average according to Richards. That's okay as contrary analysis hypothesis will claim that these are interlinguistic errors. Instead, okay, these are the errors happen within the language. Intra will refer to within instead of between. All errors, okay, to contract the okay, analysis hypothesis theories would be about what happened between the two languages. That would be interlinguistic or interling interlinguistic errors. But to Richards, okay, in order to explain, okay, these errors, okay, they are not, okay, about differences of languages. Instead, they are developmental errors. He actually have a term, okay, coined to explain that by, okay, intralingual errors. Overgeneralization, okay, these are the strategies used, okay. By using these strategies, eventually, okay, there are the phenomena that we call intralingual errors. Overgeneralization as one of the strategies is a device used when the items do not carry any obvious contrast for the learner. For example, okay, the okay, past for example, the past tense marker we have this ED, all right, the inflectional morphing ED often carries no meaning in context since okay, pastness can be indicated lexically, like for example by yesterday, by last year, okay? Something like that. You have okay very clear okay marker from the time. You have a very clear time indicator. In that case, okay, this somehow semantically and pragmatically will render ED okay unnecessary. Is that right? In that case, okay, this inflectional okay morphic ED will be often overlooked and ignored. Is that right? Because you have enough to tell okay your interlocutors to tell okay anyone to tell your readers okay to tell okay your conversationalist in the interlocutor that this is about what happened in the past. So with yesterday, with a very clear time indicator, okay, that should be enough. So in that case, okay, a lot of mixed states can be seen that okay the ED inflectional okay morbid ED to indicate past tense will be overlooked. All right. Okay, continue. All right. What you have to uh, well, sometimes you have to admit that okay, this also appear okay in native speaker corpus, all right. Ignorance of rule restrictions okay occurs when rules are extended to context where in target language usage okay they do not apply. This can result from okay analogical extension or the rote memory for rules, all right. So because you memorize that okay and okay you use that okay you ignore the restriction okay to one certain rule. And you apply that okay in all okay utterances in all okay production of okay the forms, all right. Incomplete application of rules okay involves a failure to learn the more complex types of structure because the learner finds he or she can achieve effective communication by using relatively simple rules, all right. Is that okay? So you use the simple rules okay, you will be able to convey the same meaning. Then in that case, okay, learners, okay, would have to believe that. Why bother to use, okay, complete, okay, rules instead of, okay, using, okay, part of the rule, and as long as the communication purpose can still be achieved. Yes. Does that lead to fossilization? Not necessarily. Uh, we don't say that, okay, because of this, and uh, eventually will lead to fossilization because learner, okay, may be able to make progress. We don't know. Fossilization, a lot of times, as we see, as a linguistic phenomenon, that okay, learners stop okay moving on, stop making progress. However, okay, the causes a lot of time could be very social and okay psychological. So we can actually use okay one okay one language phenomenon to determine that okay this will definitely the next stop okay is fossilization. We can say that okay unless okay you see this okay that has been so persistent for quite an extended period of time then you can have okay the suspicion saying that okay for this particular item it has been fossilized. Alright? So it's actually a different okay process of uh, investigation and also understanding. False concept hypothesized and refers to errors derived from fa uh, from faulty understanding of target language distinction. For example, is may be treated as a general marker of the present tense as in he is okay speaks French. Okay, this is an example offered here. Perhaps the most ambitious attempt to explain second language acquisition 
by analyzing the psycholinguistic original errors is to be found in George in 1972. Okay, it's about omission. George argues that errors derive from the learner's need to exploit the redundancy of language by omitting elements that are not essential for the communicational meaning. And sometimes you have to say that, okay, language, okay, second language learner, they have, okay, they try to engage in, okay, cost down efforts, right? They want to be very fast communicator. If they believe that, okay, some language features, okay, may be redundant for their communication, for their use of the second language, they omit them consciously because they don't deem, okay, this necessary. Is that right? Okay, so this has been very strong. This actually give okay, learners a very positive, very strong control of the language that they wish to produce, which okay, may be on the surface, different okay, from the target forms produced by native speakers. However, sometimes we'll see that in this case, second language learner could make a better sense about the language use, but not the native speaker. We follow okay, everything that we learn in our okay, native okay, speaking competence of the language. Sometimes, okay, we forget that there may be more efficient and effective way of uh, expressing our views. And second language learner here, okay, provide a lot of good information about that, about how redundant, in what way that redundant features, okay, should be omitted in order to facilitate the communication, okay? So this actually puts, okay, learners in a map, right? Or on the map to say that, okay, when they participate, in okay, the second language okay, utterances or corpus, they would be able to establish okay, even more effective or efficient rules for that language, for that target language. All right, uh, well, you know, uh, the current trend world English is, okay, uh, part of the discussion is on okay, this efficient use of okay, second language learners or foreign language learners okay, in English. Implicit in the times analysis provided by both Richards and George it's the assumption that at least some of the causes of errors are universal. Our analysis can be used to investigate the various processes that contribute to interlanguage development. Okay, what does it mean by being universal? What does it mean by that? If, okay, you try to work out a list about strategies, okay, that learners use, even, okay, these strategies, okay, are viewed, okay, are investigated through, okay, the many, many errors that learners make, many different types of errors, right, to reflect the strategies that learners use. But, okay, once, okay, they have this, okay, strategic, strategic plan, okay, layout that learners actually, okay, employ, they're actually saying that, okay, no matter what kind of language background, I mean, first language background that the second language learners are from, somehow they engage in, okay, the very similar strategies. So now, even strategies can be universal from error analysis. Is that right? Do we understand so far? Okay, now let's review, okay, what we have here. We'll basically finish the main task, and now this time we go back to the PowerPoint as a review. All right, so error analysis for interlanguage development. How do we use error analysis to understand interlanguage development? Or is it even possible at least, okay, from the analysis here in our test book, okay, by Ross Ellis, is it even possible? That's a good question, right? Linguistic errors, okay, destitution explaining developmental sequence. In other words, okay, it's not enough, it's insufficient to explain developmental sequence, all right? That's what's on page 52, the last paragraph. All right, synchronic discussion of errors at a given point in time without reference to the historical or developmental context. In other words, okay, you are not considering, okay, what happened, okay, afterward. Is that right? So precedence, antecedent, okay, possibly not considered. It's not just about antecedent, it's also about, okay, precedence. So what happened before and after have not been considered. You only consider what happened in that, okay, particular time. All right? So, uh, well, learners very possible use a lot of interim rules, okay, tentative rules to help them with, okay, their language production. And okay, well, all of these could change. Okay, once we use this for interim, meaning that it's not permanent, right? It comes and go. It's only tentative. Item learning, okay, chance versus system learning. That's the example given here. What's he doing? If you're learning as a chance, okay, of course, okay, you can produce the target form. You produce, okay, what's he doing correctly. However, later, even okay, by the same learner, you find the learner produce and okay 
erroneous statement or a deviant sentence like, okay, what he is doing. It doesn't necessarily mean that, okay, the learner is not making any progress. Instead, okay, what he doing has been learned as a chunk. Instead of, and okay, analyzed whole. Is that right? It's an analyst. What is the learner engage in understanding in an analytical way to understand each syntactical features that make, okay, what's he doing, okay, a target sentence, a target form of sentence. Then somehow he make it confused. However, he is actually moving a step forward, all right? So that's what item learning or chunk learning, okay, can tell us about, okay, his current status. But in order to understand that whether or not he has learned this and he has developed that confidence, you need to engage in more understanding of systematic learning or system learning of the learners. Okay, psycholinguistic errors. So we talk about strategy. So uh, we have Richards overgeneralization, ignorance of rule restriction. We talk about that, and okay, incomplete application, and also false concept synthesize. You synthesize the false concept. You have the wrong understanding of the rule. All right, and George actually given okay more power to learners, saying that okay for very efficient use of the language for very effective communication. Learners, okay, will push themselves to overlook, to consciously overlook, or even, okay, to actively omit some parts of the rules in the second language. All right. Okay. So the contribution errors can be can serve as a guide to understand learning process, and however, okay, may not be the whole picture. However, it gives you okay partial information, but still not enough. But this is not okay to say that error analysis, okay, cannot make any contribution. At least, okay, it received less criticism as, okay, what happened to control the analysis hypothesis, all right? Second language position structured by human faculty in a universal manner, so somehow, okay, strategies used, okay, could be very universal. And the natural route, okay, may not be able to be identified by direct error analysis, but it's actually a start. So again, going back to the question I asked, that okay, if okay, providing only providing synchronic description of errors at a certain period of time cannot offer a whole picture to the learners' interlanguage development. If, say for example, by the accumul by the accumulation of okay, different synchronic discussion at different times, put it all together, if this can present a developmental context, if this can present a historical review of uh, the learners' interlanguage continuum. Would this okay make up for what is not enough for error analysis? That being partial. It's a very good AC question. Okay, all right. That could be a very um, big okay area that okay will call for a lot of okay further exploration and investigation. Okay, are we good so far? Then okay, we're moving to page okay fifty five. Well, I. I think that right here I skip page 54 empirical evidence for an interlanguage hypothesis. We'll go to cross-sectional research. Okay. Uh, we'll